had some class to me. You, see, and you know what? What's their name? They, they, What's they their name? So right, Chikali, Chikali. That's that's oh, name. God. Chikali. So there Don't was Chikali. Don't document stuff. Oh. There was Chikali. Okay, I'm this is the documentary now. right now we're doing. See, there, was, there was Chikali. There was Vitamin X. There were a whole lot. And then later, locally, and this was my early nineties. Locally, in the early nineties, a huge reggae movement had started. I think before the early 90s i didn't see that part i didn't see the beginning but i just felt like run into it there used to be a popular reggae joint called afro caribbean center around um, behind joy fm okay mm. afro caribbean center owned by a jamaican brother called dam may he so rest in peace he later um uh, relocated to nigeria and passed afro caribbean center became the joint where I think on Mon no, I think it was Wednesday or Thursdays, there was a live reggae that, like music session where you go and people are, you know, eating, drinking, and there's a live reggae. And each night there was a reggae band, a local reggae band, or say <coughs> two reggae bands that played, you know, like two bands that held the night. And we're talking groups such as SOZ, um, Roots of David. Um, local crisis, King Band, and all those ones. And Daddy Bosco used to be in one, one of the of them. one yeah. of the reggae bands. Yeah. It, I, it, it, it would have been a very beautiful conversation if we had Daddy Bosco here yeah. tonight. Yeah. You see, reggae is not new to Ghanaians. Reggae is not something that just started. Dancehall is not something that just got started here in Ghana because it comes from them. So Afro Caribbean Center was the place. Then later, a Ghanaian. A Ghanaian, a Ghanaian reggae artist called Jara, yeah, set up another reggae joint. Yeah. Are you talking about Jara or Jara? No. no. Okay. There was a Jara, <laughs> and so there was a Jara spot at the Rollings Park, mm. where, like, on top of this building, it was purely reggae, Whoa. and it was live music, and there were reggae bands playing one after the other. Wow. Okay, and. I think those were Friday nights or so. And on Friday nights when you go, when you attend any of these, when you attend any of these um, reggae, reggae, reggae sessions at the Jara Sport, the car park is filled. Wow. And up there, on top of the on top of the building, is filled to capacity. It's like you can't even find space if you don't come before 8 p.m. Hmm. Whoa. So there was that massive, that massive reggae. Following for I'm reggae telling you. Dance all at that time. At that time. And guess what? This was around 93 thereabouts. So I had met General Marcus and we had formed a group. And Marcus and I used to go around and, you know, wherever we go and there's reggae and there's a. And you and Marcus? Marcus. We, what was the name of this group? We were Legalized Illegal. <laughs> 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 we didn't even know what it meant. <laughs> you just okay, have to start yeah, something. Yeah, we just have to start. So, <laughs> so we'll go around, and then when when you know when there's a little opportunity, they will just pass us the mic, and we we'll, we will entertain you know patrons at the places. So Afro Caribbean Center, there was Jara Sport, and these were strictly reggae joint. I don't even know if we have apart from Asase. No Asase, Asase, Asase. No. Uh, what's the name of the place? Um, Amsterdam? No. Oh, the, one, the one by the Bidding Power Hall. Oh, um. Glens? No. No, no, no. Oh, Bidding Power Hall. Yeah. Akuma. 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 Yeah. Akuma. And this was yeah. before Akuma. Akuma. Okay. So Akuma should be. Should be. Uh, like, it is the reggae headquarters for Ghana currently. I mean, that is where. Yeah, that's where a lot of action You know what I mean? But, you know, for Corona and everything, you know, no, yeah. there's no action, you know. But Akuma, Akuma has held but, but a fort. Th that raises another discussion. When yes. We'll get See, to that. Akuma has a potential. But I think it would need some funding support and yeah, some and proper you know, management. Properly, of the place. yeah, marketing. Uh, 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 like proper marketing strategies, you know, put in place to get the place running because we can't we, we can't do without it. Yeah. It has always been with us. Our parents loved reggae. Jimmy Cliff or Marley, um, name them. Marley Priest. Huge 
Maxi Priest was, was later. Maxi Priest was later. They came in the earlier days. Yeah, 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 in the in yeah, a, in, yeah, a, in yeah. the early part of the night. He was yeah. doing his thing. I read yeah. about Maxi Priest not yeah. long ago. Yeah. He actually comes from the seventies, but he actually got on the global scene in from the eighties. In, yes. in, no, in, in, in the eighties, yeah. about. You know, so this is how I saw it, but how we started creating our own um, came from when Reggae Calypso became so huge in Ghana, Yellow Man, Yellow Man. then London Poor and Musical all youth. those and then Musical Youth it was, yeah. you see Reggae was so huge that Musical Youth was in Ghana for a concert how many of us know that? Mm. I, I had no I idea. Too, not too many people ever heard. heard Musical that. Youth played at the Accra Sports Stadium. But I heard that was the main guy in the show. Up. Yeah, the, 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 um, I think um, was it Dennis that so show. But I mean, like most of them came. came yeah, yeah. You know, so they and they performed all the hit songs. You know, Jimmy Cliff been to Ghana like yeah. many times. Yeah, like. Um, Many times. Yes. Not to cut you, last time I posted, I posted a ticket on my Facebook page. Which ticket? Um, yeah. and this was the yeah. ticket for a concert in yeah. 1971. Wow! When Tina Turner and all that came formed to Ghana. in Ghana. Or wow. for the for the soul to soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I put it then. You know, everybody was kind of shocked. Like, really? This was in 1971. Yes. And Tina Turner was in Ghana. The soul to soul one day. I remember. I I got information on it. I can relate to what you are saying. You know because. Because people didn't have information, yes. you know, we think, Calypso we think that really you, it gave a certain And a lot exposure. of young people today think dance all started with Wally. Yeah. It's, it's, that's you know, where me are coming from. But, yeah. Yeah, a lot, this new a lot generation, of that, they start Wally, hearing Wally of dance all with Wally. Wally people that's that influenced him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wally, Wally is a reggae, like, put dance all aside. If he decides Araba to consumer. reggae. Much you chemical. weak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you go yeah. weak. Yeah. You go. So he I comes from that. Yeah, I hear yeah, some tunes. Yeah. 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 The first I time, the the first time yeah. I heard of Do Wale, yeah. eh? no. it was Elon who sent me his reggae some of, song. Some of, my, some, of my, some of my most favorite local reggae songs. Uh, the Quansman, Let's Do It Right. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. Yes. Mm. You know? and, and there's another one that talks too much about chemical. I, too much chemical. Too much chemicals. He's a reggae artist. And the influence comes from some point, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, for the young ones, do your do some research, learn yeah. some more about all of these things. But Ruth, I, I, I wanted to stay on that tangent, you know, like the influence of Yellow Man, Reggae Calypso, what it actually did for your generation for to me, actually start I, I, your I own way of, you know, writing your, your yes. own kind of music I was and all to that. Roy, yeah. and, and he modeled me. I was sing, you know, the, the style, the, the way they jumped on the rhythm and everything. Then you know, came, you know, the melodies the guy was singing and all that. You get me? And then around 86 or so, I got the chance to own about five crates <laughs> of reggae vinyls. <laughs> That's a lot of history. A collection, you know, a collection made of Freddie McGregor. Um, Dennis Brown, The wow. Youths, name them. Very good. You know? And why, why, why was this music in Ghana? My daddy studied in Germany, and he came home. You know, Germany is rubber again. Yeah. Mm. Daddy came home with a huge collection of music, like vinyls. Mm. You know, and because I love. I mean, I, I, I gravitated towards the reggae sound more, even though there were a lot of other 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 oh, songs, yeah. like other genres, because there was blues and you know jazz and yeah. all that. Because me, I grew up on Otis Redding's oh. um, era, eh, eh, sorry, eh, you know, all those James Brown, Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. name them, yeah. all the big. So from from you know, classicals to R and B so to I, hip hop, so I listened to, to everything, everything. Yeah. but I gravitated towards reggae more because of the sound and the vibe the message that the i heard yeah. you know the kind of things reggae was speaking to to you about to, to my soul yeah. you know so i you know i fell in love with reggae and then um around um 90 i think 91 there about i finished my own levels and um at home you know waiting results 
my friends knew that I was into this whole you know music music when music, I hear some yeah. when I hear when I hear about someone that speaks but I'd go and look for him <laughs> become friends with him you know and try to learn a thing or two you know and then you know started meeting Jamaican uh, friends who yeah. had repatriated to Ghana or like well, on visit yeah. to Ghana become friends you know learn get more yeah. get in, get deeper into their music learn more about their culture it, it, it's something that fascinated me and it's, it got me you know to start considering creating my own music mm. so mm. my friends knew that and then um, for, for that reason if a friend of mine goes somewhere meets someone like me they will try and find mm. out where the person yeah. lives and yeah. things like that we yeah. didn't have mobile phones then but you know so my, my friend my friend <laughs> yeah my friend Aziz told me about General Marcus mm. and then before Aziz would take me to General Marcus. I met Marcus in a studio somewhere and we Ooh. became friends. And I said, I heard about Ooh. you. A friend yeah. told me about you. And then because he was also like a kid growing up, loving reggae, chasing his reggae music and everything, we just immediately became friends. Yeah. And we decided to start doing music, you know, together and things like that. And then we created, uh, you know, rhymes. And, you know, sometimes we'll go to Marcus's place. He had a big sound system. We used to call it Ghetto Blaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the big black one. The big black one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? We we'll go to his place and get a get a ghetto blaster on and we we'll play instrumentals, you know, the dops. And we'll just toast on them and things like that. And then um what even happened? Uh we decided to, you know, become a group and start going around performing. Then Kinte Band took us as they are like um how how would i even describe yeah, protege we're like we're like the young the protege ranga artists yeah. who open for kente band yeah. Yeah. so when opening, kente band opening yeah when Ken, opening act when, when kente band did their their development plan album, album yeah. the very first kente, no album. Kente, yeah that album and you know they were to tour ghana marcus and i and kofi kumbelson oh kk wow. he used to be a rapper <laughs> Piece of him. Yes. Like, the the, the yes. chartered accountant, yes. the short man. The great rock. Like, are we talking the same? Kofi Kumbilson. Kofi Kumbilson, the great. Yes, right. Media. Exactly. The short Kofi Kumbilson. Yes. The chartered accountant. The chartered accountant. Before, before be a rapper. You, wait, Chief. Great writer. Wait, I'm telling you. you know, before Piece of him, me ahead of him from yeah. Joy FM. Yeah. You see? Playing play lunchtime ratings. Yes. And, then, and then went to Kumasi. Yes. To, Love Before coming back. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I told you, you know, yes. this is the history of <laughs> dancehall and reggae music. <laughs> and you hear the names that are coming up already. Wait until. I remember, yeah. I remember, I remember some lines from Kofi Kumbilson that, that I will never forget. It, because of Dilena Yo Uno Uno Ni Ye. Dilena Yo Uno Uno Ni. When, when, yo, when, 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 a, when a rhythm is dropped and Kofi Kumbilson grabs the mic and flows his thing, and, and he, he's an artist. You 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 would just love to see him the way he dresses, you know his style when he touches the mic. Style and pattern. He, he was amazing to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kofi Kumbels, yes. Wow. You know. So <laughs> and, and he lived in Bubuashi. Yeah. You know, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Each other. Bubuashi guy. For long, for very long. long yes. yeah, yeah. So they knew each other, and I, I I I met them, became friends with them, and so I used to go to them and we do our things together and things like that. And so Kofi Kumbels and myself. General Marcus and a guy called Macho MC. We before the Macho MC that you know, Macho rapper. He's Macho rapper. Macho rapper. Okay, cool. We had Macho MC. So the 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 the, the four or so of us would travel with Kente on their tour. Kente toured Ghana with reggae music, with Ooh. their reggae album. Toured Ghana and packed venues. Mm. I remember going with them to Koforidia, we played at Bula Matari, it was a place, mm -hmm. apart from Eridek, there's another yeah. place that, Bula, you know, Bula, Bula Matari, we played there, and, and packed the place up, Kente Band, a reggae band, we played in Kumase at the Great Hall of the uh, Kia University, mm -hmm. and packed Kia University, means. you know, the, the auditorium, that huge auditorium, so reggae has come from, you know, a very solid background, for me, it, 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 it was much active back then. Mm, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yes. That's true. I see. But 